Hello again. Um, today I wanted to talk about luxury and consumption. Luxury is very important in the history and theory of consumption uh, because it becomes the ultimate um, standard to which consumption, most consumption aspires, uh, at least consumption that concerns uh, the body particularly. So things like clothing, food and drink, uh, cars, homes, objects we might use every day, we, we consider them uh, to be luxurious if they're of a very high quality or a very high standard, often if they're very expensive or rare. The history of luxury is very interesting. It, it derives from the Latin word for sensual pleasure. And um, uh, the Romans uh, thought luxury was all right as long as it was spent on others such as when you uh, put on a feast for everyone. Whereas if you were going to just get your friends along and get drunk, it was regarded as very bad. So right at the start of its history, luxury is sort of debatable. And this becomes much more apparent when luxury starts migrating downwards from being um, associated only with the wealthy. Um, what happened was, in the 14th century particularly, um, the, uh, the court in Constantinople, which um, uh, was the centre of the Greek side of the Roman Empire, um, began to collapse under the uh, invasions of the Turks. And this disrupted uh, the trade routes between the European courts and the East, where their luxuries came from, silks, colours in paintings, uh, precious stones, spices, all these things were highly valued. And the trade route, uh, largely through Venice, was disrupted because of this ongoing war. And eventually uh, the Roman Empire collapsed and the Turks took over Constantinople, which is now Istanbul. So the, um, the, the impact of that was for the courts in Europe to start paying people to getting luxuries to them in other ways. And uh, America was one of the results of this payment for trying to find alternative, safer routes to the East um, from Europe. So, but what happens is when Columbus discovers America, he, um, the people that followed him and himself as well discovered many other things that occurred in America and nowhere else, things that were desirable, they were novelties. And initially they were luxuries because they were rare and expensive and they came from a long way away. But soon they were grown in plantations using uh, African slaves, um, which was something the Europeans picked up uh, from the Arabs uh, who pioneered in this terrible trade. So um, there was a sort of a, a rising demand in Europe for uh, novelties and luxuries that were grown um, on plantations and um, either in America or in India where um, they became more and more interested in the wealth there as well. So you find this rising demand in Europe for things like cottons, sugar, tobacco, tea, coffee, chocolate, mahogany and other exotic imports. Design and commerce worked really hand in hand with these. The designers created implements, for example, to drink your coffee and your chocolate in. Um, I've seen letters from um, people writing to their agents in India demanding uh, that the Indian um, makers of cotton got rid of those sad red dark backgrounds because for Europe, Europeans, dark colours weren't very good or weren't very attractive because of the, the weather fact that it was cloudy a lot of the time and uh, there was of course no electricity so it's very important to have bright backgrounds you know white backgrounds so um, you know this this um, uh, very early on you can see design appearing as a way of making uh, novelties and luxuries more attractive to more people and this developed trade this developed commerce um, and uh, a new middle class, which grew out of all this. Um, everyone from lawyers to surveyors to um, bankers, uh, um, accountants, uh, 
And since their wealth was not tied to land, their wealth was tied to trade, they had to express themselves through their possessions, through their homes, through their own copies of luxury objects. Um, so uh, what you find is a very rapid migration of luxury products through copying. And again, design playing a very important role in this. By the 18th century, by the late 18th century, ordinary carpenters in Paris are wearing gilt watches. Now, given that they didn't need to tell the time, this is really about uh, looking like the middle class, looking as though they were respectable. The word respectable is very, very important in this. So in the 18th century, you have this democratization of luxury and the appearance of what, are, what were then called semi-luxuries, or in French, populux. And um, so because one's status became increasingly um, tied to one's appearance, and if you look um, in my book, I talk about this. If you look at, say, uh, some of the satirical art from the period, like Hogarth's uh, Rake's Progress, um, a lot of people don't really understand that this is actually a wannabe. This is not really an aristocrat. This is a, a guy who wants to become or wants to be accepted as a man about town, um, a young aristocratic blade and uh, he inherits a fortune and then the very sad series of prints sees him slowly uh, uh, destroy his own fortune by pursuing this um, uh, sort of this, this standard of luxury that his real really wealthy aristocratic friends uh, were, were brought up to. So um, for Hogarth this pursuit of luxury uh, was like a cautionary tale. It led to debt, to ruin, and uh, illness and ultimately a new form of madness. So, um, so to conclude this little very brief talk, luxury is the ultimate standard in desirable things and it's always associated with the body. We don't get luxury water pumps. You know, we don't get, we get luxury motorbikes because they're things we can possess. Um, so possession proves our worth, our status in this new commercial society. And um, it proves our values in big cities where we don't know many people. Uh, people see us and think, oh, that guy's okay. He's wearing a suit. He must be all right. He's, wear he's driving a BMW. He's okay. Um, uh, and so the appearance of luxury always seems to trigger off people trying to cash in on it. So you find over a long period of time, luxuries slowly descend, uh, you know, to lower classes. But what is unique from the 18th century onwards is the speed of this, this process of democratization, which is, is very, very different. And by the 19th century, you have a whole, uh, you know, with industrialization, you have a whole uh, middle class, middle ranks of people who are associated with high consumption. They're all, as, as if you like, consumers. And um, the, the people who would like to be respectable as well amongst the working class, like um, cabinet makers say, they also uh, became, if you like, a lower middle class. So um, what I'd like to next week is, or next session, is to talk about um, how uh, economic growth really is tied to this process of democratizing luxury and the pursuit of the good life that consumption of luxury opens up. And then we'll also be looking at uh, the industrial systems that make it possible to copy luxury cheaply, to copy the standards cheaply and mass produce them for everyone. And of course, the uh, environmental damage this inflicts. Thank you.